Today's is lesson 13, and it's slavery in the new world. Galatians 3.28 says, There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. The Bible is very clear that all of humanity is made in God's image. Genesis 1, 26 through 27. We were created out of an overflow of God's love. And when God created mankind, his desire was to be in relationship with us. This verse in Galatians makes it clear that God does not judge us by our nationality, our wealth, or our gender. As children of God, we are all loved equally and dearly by our Creator. And so we can only imagine how much it must break God's heart to see us treat each other with disrespect, violence, and hatred. Throughout history, different people groups have been subjected to terrible mistreatment. Slavery is one such example. When people were enslaved, they are held against their will and forced to do work they would not otherwise choose to do. The idea of slavery is that the slave belongs to another person, their master, and must work for them without receiving pay. Sadly, slaves were often mistreated, beaten, starved, and treated unfairly by their masters. When we think of slavery, we often think of African slaves in early American history. However, slaves were present most major civilizations from the beginning of time. It was seen in ancient Egypt, Greece, and Rome, and continued through medieval Europe in countries like Russia, France, Spain, and Italy. Although it is not unheard of for indigenous peoples to enslave people for other, from other tribes, widespread sla slavery was not known in the Americans when the Europeans arrived. Unfortunately, all of that changed in the 16th century. And you should know, when we say century, we are referring to a hundred year period of time. This gets a little confusing though. You see, the 16th century refers to the 15th, 1500s, while the 18th century refers to the 1700s. This is because the first century would have been from the year 1 A.D. to the year 100 A.D. Then the second century would have started in the year 101 A.D. and the third century in 201 A.D. and so on. What century are you living in right now? In what century were your parents born? Transatlantic Slave Trade from the 16th to the 19th century, many items were traded across the Atlantic Ocean. While most of these items were resources such as spices, cotton, sugar, and weapons, it's important to know that people were also traded. During that time, the Portuguese, Dutch, English, and French, French were responsible for transporting millions of Africans across the ocean to the New World. While many slaves did land on American soil, most slaves were brought to nearby uh, por ports in the Caribbean and South America. And I don't know whether your teacher will have this map shown in this book, but be sure and look it over. It shows the routes that they took for the transatlantic slave trade route. You can see how they, uh, how and where they carried all the produce and slaves. The first American slaves in America. After Af African slaves first entered the story of American history in the 16th century, when they were brought to Florida by Spanish so uh, explorers, while it is believed that famous explorer Ponce de Leon, who discovered Florida in 1513, brought kidnapped Africans with him on his voyage, the first official record of this happened was in the year 1539 when explorer and slave trader Hernando de Soto was granted permission to bring 50 African slaves to help him establish a permanent colony. It is said that most of these slaves ran away from de Soto upon arrival, and it is believed they went to live with indigenous Americans of nearby tribes. However, over the next several decades, the Spanish would continue 
to bring slaves from Africa, and those men and women were unwillingly a part of building the first American city, St. Augustine. And you should know, it is important to note that while African slave trade was common in practice, the British and Spanish were also known to enslave indigenous Americans as well. African slaves in Jamestown. Despite the fact that an African slave derived in America nearly a century before the Spanish explorers, the year 1619, is often referred to in history books as the year African slaves first arrived. This is because 1619 marks the year that African slaves were first introduced to the British colonies. Since the British prevailed and became the founders of the United States, their stories tend to be remembered by most. So while there were not the fir- they were not the first, it is important to understand how slave trade began in the British colonies because it will help us trace this sad and brutal history. About 700 people were living in Jamestown in the year 1619 when a ship called the White Lion arrived at the port carrying African slaves. Upon their arrival, the crew traded about 20 slaves for food and resources before continuing on their way. These African people had already been through a great deal of hardship before arriving in Virginia. Having been captured by the Portuguese and forced to board a slave ship, many of them had died from illness at sea. Those who survived were then kidnapped by private slave traders who attacked the Portuguese ships. It was from these kidnapped slaves that 20 or so were chosen and traded in Jamestown. This first incident of trading human lives for goods in Jamestown began a long process of slavery in early America, a difficult history that is challenging to understand and impossible to erase. Indentured Servant versus Slave It is important to understand the difference between an indentured servant and a slave. While both are under the authority of their master, an indentured servant agrees to a contract to work for a certain period of time in exchange for housing, food, and eventually freedom. Many of the Europeans who traveled to America in those early years became an indentured servant. These were often because they could not afford the trip across the Atlantic or did not have the resources to establish a new life. So they would indenture themselves to someone else and work in exchange for their needs being met. Being an indentured servant was more like having a job which pays you by meeting your needs rather than with money, although it is important to note that they were not always treated well but they had some assurance of a better life in the future. A slave, on the other hand, had no say in his situation. Slaves were bought, sold, and traded as though they were mere objects, not humans. They were valued based on their health, strength, and skill. Mistreated, beaten, starved, and forced to work long hours each day, the life of a slave was painful and challenging. The slave trade removed any form of dignity from the people forced into slavery. When the first 20 Africans were traded to the British in Jamestown, they were technically offered an indentured servant. Were technically offered as indentured servants. Sorry. However, there is much debate over whether they were granted the rights of a servant, as if they were truly treated like slaves. Either way, they did not have a choice in their situation, and life for these men and women were extremely difficult. Only decades after their arrival, slave was introduced into the British colonies. These laws would strip slaves and black indentured servants of their rights. The laws encouraged the view that people with skin any darker than the British majority were not as valuable, and many believed that the African slaves that lived among them were expendable. This was evident in the way these precious people were treated and was the mark of a dark time period in American history. 
And when you talk about things like this, does slavery still happen today? What questions do you have about slavery? And take some time to discuss this based on your student-specific questions. So talk it over and think about this deal on slavery. So that concludes Lesson 13.